Hey everyone, welcome to part 103 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in the previous video, we started implementing the generic selector component and we used it to handle selection in our menu state. But right now, we can only change the selection. We can't press the Z or the action button to choose an item from the menu. And we also can't press the X or the back button to go back from the menu, right? So we'll add that functionality to our generic selector in this video. By the way, I started a new series on Patreon that covers how to make a 3D Pokemon game like Pokemon Legends Arceus in Unity. So if you're interested in making a 3D Pokemon game or a 3D RPG game in general, then you can check out this course on Patreon. So by becoming a Patreon, you can support this channel and get access to the 3D Pokemon series and get some other cool rewards like the complete project files of the series, some exclusive tutorials, and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So from the selection UI, let's implement what should happen when the Z or X key is pressed. Okay. So the action to be performed when the X or Z key is pressed will be different for different selection UI, right? So what we have to do is we have to create two events here for the on selected and on back action. And then we can subscribe to this event and perform different actions from different selection UIs. Okay. So here, first I'll create an action called on selected. Okay, and by the way, to use action, we have to import the system namespace. And this action will also take an integer as a parameter for the selected item. Okay, so here I made the selected item float for some reason. So let me change it back to an integer. And I also have to change it here. Okay, so this action will be invoked when the user presses the Z key, right? So next, I'll also create an action called on back. So this will be executed when the user presses the X key. Okay. So now from here, we can invoke these actions based on the input of the user. So here, I don't want to directly check for the Z and X keys because we want to make the selection UI also work with the controller, right? So we should not check for the X and Z key directly. Instead, we should create inputs like this for it. Okay. So let's go to the input manager. So I'll go to project settings and select input manager. And here you can see we have the horizontal and vertical input. So this is for the keyboard, right? And we also have another horizontal and vertical input for the joystick. Okay. So similarly, we'll create an input for the action and back actions. Okay. So let me just duplicate this jump input so that I don't have to enter all these configuration values again. So I'll just duplicate this and I'll create a new input called action. So we want this to be triggered when the user presses the Z key. So here I'll put Z for the positive button. Okay. So next I'll duplicate this and create the back input. And for the back input, the positive button will be X. Okay. So now we have to do the same for the joystick buttons. So here we have a jump input to the joystick button. So, so we can just duplicate that and create an action input. Okay. So I want the action input to be triggered when the A button is pressed on the joystick. Okay. So the A button is joystick button zero and uh, by the way, you can find this by searching for 
unity controller mapping on google so here you can see the mapping for each button so you can see that a is 0 and b is 1 x is 2 and so on okay so just refer this if you don't know the buttons so for the action input i'll assign the joystick button 0 and then i'll duplicate this and create the back input for the joystick okay so for the back input i want to assign the b button in the joystick so i'll change this to joystick button one all right so now we have configured the action and back input for both keyboard and joystick so now let's go ahead and use that from our code so here i'll use the input dot get button down function and i'll check if the action button is down okay so if the action button is down we have to invoke the on selected action right so let me do that okay and while invoking it we also have to pass the integer parameter for the selected item okay so next if the back button is pressed so let me just copy this and change it to back then we have to invoke the on back action okay so now these actions will be invoked when the action or back input is pressed so now all we have to do is assign a function to this action from our different selection states okay and uh, by the way before i do that i'll actually make these actions an event just to be safe and make sure that none of the states will be able to override these actions okay so now we can subscribe to these events so first let's do it from the game menu state since that's the only selection state that we have right now so we can subscribe to the events of the menu controller from the enter function okay so from here we can get the on selected and on back events and we can subscribe and assign a function to it so let me create a function for it first so here i'll create a function called on menu item selected okay and this will also take a parameter for the selection okay and from here based on the selection we have to go to different states right so if pokemon is selected then we have to go to party selection state and if the bag is selected then we have to go to the inventory state right but we haven't defined all those states right now using our new state machine so for now let's just do a debug.log statement from here to test if this is working okay so i'll just lock something like selected menu item and i'll append the selection okay so now i'll also create a function for on back and from here we just have to pop the menu state and go back to the previous state right so actually we are already doing it from the execute function but we should not do it from here instead we should be doing it using the events of the selection ui right that's a much cleaner approach so let me just remove this and i'll pop the state from here okay so now we can subscribe to these events and assign the functions that we created okay so let me also assign the on back function okay and a very important thing that you should not forget is 
if we are subscribing to events from the enter function we should unsubscribe it from the exit function okay so i'll just copy these two lines and i'll use minus equal to to unsubscribe from these events okay so this is really important if you miss this then we'll keep subscribing to these events and these functions will be called even when we are not in the menu state okay so that'll cause a lot of weird issues so be sure to unsubscribe from the exit function okay so now let's go to unity and test if the action and back events are working okay so let me open the menu and i can change the selection like before but now if i press the z key then i'll get a log saying selected menu item with the index of the item okay so you can see how the index changes when i change the selection and now if i press x then you can see that we are popping the menu state right and by the way you can also plug in a joystick and try testing using the a and b buttons it should work in the same way so this is great our selection is working completely using the code in our selection ui class so we don't have to write separate selection code for separate selection states right this is all the code that i've written to create the menu selector and in the state i just had to call the handle update and then subscribe and unsubscribe to the events right but we don't have to rewrite all these code for each selection ui like we are doing right now okay so next just like we did for the menu controller we can make all the selections in our game use the selection ui so in the next video i'll change the party screen and the inventory screen to use the generic selector component and the state stack architecture so i'll stop the video here if you think this video is helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out and you can also support the series on patreon if you can afford it all right so thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next video